This talk is an overview of the diagnosis of tic disorders. In this talk, I'll review the tic disorder diagnoses in the Neurodevelopmental Disorders chapter of the DSM-5 with mnemonics and visuals. First, let's review what a tic is. A tic is defined as a sudden, rapid, recurrent, non-rhythmic motor movement or vocalization. Tics involve having a strong urge to perform the tic beforehand, relief of the urge after performing the tic, and are temporarily suppressible with effort. Tics have a waxing and waning course, which means that they may become more or less severe over time, and they may evolve over time, which means that new tics may develop or existing tics may increase in severity or complexity. Tics are worsened by stress, fatigue, boredom, excitement, or when attention is paid to them, and they are improved or reduced by relaxation, rest, exercise, mindfulness practices, and concentration. Here are some examples of both motor and vocal tics, separated by complexity. Examples of simple motor tics include blinks, grimaces, shrugs, or head jerks, while complex motor tics include kicking, jumping, gyrating, or scratching. Examples of simple vocal tics include grunts, moans, sniffs, or throat clearing, while complex vocal tics include echolalia, which involves repeating words, and coprolalia, which involves cursing or using other obscene words. Next, let's review the criteria for the different tic disorders. Listed in order from most to least stringent criteria, the tic disorders are Tourette's disorder, persistent motor or vocal tic disorder, and provisional tic disorder. I've also included the other specified tic disorder designation, which I'll explain the reason for in a bit. These disorders are distinguished based on the number of motor and vocal tics present, the duration of symptoms, and the onset of symptoms. Starting with Tourette's disorder, this involves having at least two motor tics and at least one vocal tic. Duration must be at least one year, and onset must be less than 18 years old. Persistent motor tic disorder involves having at least one motor tic, but no vocal tics. It has the same duration and onset as Tourette's disorder. Similarly, persistent vocal tic disorder involves having at least one vocal tic, but no motor tics. Again, it has the same duration and onset as Tourette's disorder. Provisional tic disorder is a bit different. This diagnosis is used when the patient has at least one tic of either motor or vocal type, but the tics have not yet lasted for at least one year. Therefore, this designation can be used as a placeholder early on in the disease course, and can be replaced with one of the more specific tic disorders after a longer period of observation. Finally, this is more of an academic discussion than of practical importance, but the other specified tic disorder designation can be used if tics are present, but number of tics, duration, or onset do not fit cleanly into one of the other disorder categories. For example, consider a patient who has both one motor and one vocal tic that have lasted for longer than one year. This patient would not meet criteria for any of the other tic disorders, but nevertheless, these symptoms may be clinically important, so this designation can be used to indicate this. Another example would be a patient whose tics began when they were older than 18 years old. Let me conclude by pointing out a couple details that may help you memorize these criteria. First, I think that the most useful criteria to remember these differences are in Tourette's disorder, remembering that two motor tics and one vocal tic are required, and that provisional tic disorder is distinguished by having tics for less than one year. Another tool to remember the Tourette's disorder criteria is visualizing the T in Tourette's, where the two dots at the top of the T represent the two motor tics, and the dot at the bottom of the T represents the one vocal tic. That's the end of this talk. I hope this simplification makes it easy to remember the tic disorders. Thank you.